Developing a rocket is, without a doubt, one of the most challenging engineering feats out there. When something is considered easy, we usually say it's not rocket science, because everyone understands that rocket science is difficult. SpaceX, however, isn't just working with any rocket science. They're tackling the science of the largest rocket ever built, Starship. And they're doing better than anyone could have imagined just a few decades ago. But with a project as complex and ambitious as Starship, even the best plans sometimes need to change. We've seen how SpaceX planned for the incredible mid-air booster catch during Starship's fifth test flight. But now, SpaceX has revealed they're making a major adjustment to their strategy for the upcoming Flight 6. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Before we get into the details, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates on Starship and SpaceX's groundbreaking achievements. It's useful to understand that Starship is still in the testing phase, and all previous flights have been focused on perfecting various systems rather than reaching specific destinations or carrying cargo. For example, the fourth Starship test in June 2024 involved Booster 11 and Ship 29. The mission achieved a controlled splashdown of the booster in the Gulf of Mexico, where SpaceX tested how accurately it could manage booster descent and control. The upper stage also completed re-entry with some heat damage, landing off target in the Indian Ocean, but close enough to validate that its systems were functioning well. The fifth flight, in October 2024, took things further. It was the first test to catch the booster mid-air, using the launch tower's chopstick-like arms. Ship 30, the upper stage, executed a successful descent and splashed down in the Indian Ocean. SpaceX expects many more test flights will be needed before Starship can begin its main missions. A major goal for these upcoming tests is achieving reliable in-space engine relighting. During the third test flight, SpaceX initially planned to test relighting Starship's engines while it was still in space. This would have allowed it to demonstrate the capability to reorient or slow the rocket, but they canceled the test because of stability issues on re-entry. Since then, both the fourth and fifth flights skipped this test, focusing instead on booster control and re-entry testing. Relighting engines in space is critical for Starship's full range of mission types. If Starship can reliably start its engines multiple times while in orbit, it can make complex moves like docking with other spacecraft, adjusting its path during flight, or changing orbits which are necessary steps for interplanetary travel. For comparison, many famous rockets don't need this in-space relighting because they operate differently. The Space Shuttle, for instance, didn't rely on in-space relighting of its main engines. The shuttle would launch with its solid rocket boosters and main engines, but once in orbit, it used smaller thrusters called orbital maneuvering system engines for any adjustments. The main engines weren't designed to start in space since the shuttle didn't need that capability for its typical missions. In contrast, Starship's design aims to allow the same main engines to start multiple times. If something unexpected happened early in the flight, being able to restart engines could allow Starship to stabilize itself or attempt a safe return to Earth. SpaceX hopes to conduct a full in-space relight test on the sixth or seventh test flights. They recently completed a test with 34 Raptor engines, successfully relighting them within 10 minutes at their Texas facility. For Starship's sixth test flight, SpaceX initially planned to catch both the booster and the upper stage with Mechazilla. However, they've opted to only catch the booster this time, repeating the approach used in the fifth flight. SpaceX was considering two options, to either stick with the 2024 timeline and catch only the booster or delay until 2025 to develop the systems needed to catch both stages. As expected, SpaceX went for the quicker option. Catching the booster alone is already a technically impressive feat. The booster is launched to a high altitude, after which it turns around and descends back to the launch pad. As it approaches, the booster needs to slow down significantly and align itself with Mechazilla's chopstick arms for a precise mid-air capture. This requires precise control over its orientation, speed, and descent trajectory. Even slight misalignments or drift could cause the booster to miss the catch or even damage the catch tower. Attempting to catch the upper stage would be even more challenging. 
Unlike the booster, which falls back from a lower altitude and at lower speeds, the upper stage would be re-entering Earth's atmosphere from orbit, traveling at extremely high velocities. This speed not only makes it more challenging to control, but also subjects the upper stage to intense heating and aerodynamic forces that can destabilize its descent. One of the biggest upcoming plans for Starship is the orbital refueling test. Starship's fuel capacity alone isn't enough for long journeys like those to the Moon or Mars. To solve this, SpaceX is developing a system where one Starship, acting as a target, will enter orbit and later be joined by a chaser Starship that will transfer fuel. This allows the target Starship to leave Earth's orbit fully fueled and prepared for extended missions. SpaceX's refueling process is different from typical docking operations, mainly because it involves transferring supercooled cryogenic fuels, liquid methane and liquid oxygen, while in orbit. In microgravity, these fuels don't settle naturally to the bottom of a tank, so SpaceX must manage how the propellants behave while moving. They're working on methods to control the slosh or movement of the fuel and determine the right amount of thrust to keep the fuel stable during transfer. Additionally, the system must prevent fuel boil-off, as space temperatures can cause the liquid fuel to turn into gas and escape the tank if not managed properly. Lastly, if you've noticed, the current Starship prototypes lack landing legs, which is intentional for this phase of testing. SpaceX uses other support structures to lift Starship on and off the ground, as legs aren't necessary for the missions completed so far. However, SpaceX does plan for Starship to land on both the Moon and Mars, and there won't be any launch towers or Mechazilla catch arms waiting on those surfaces. So, developing landing legs is essential for future planetary missions. SpaceX's specific plan for lunar missions involves a variant called the Starship Human Landing System, developed under a NASA contract for the Artemis program. This version of Starship is designed with wide landing legs to provide a stable base for landing on the moon's rough terrain. These landing legs need to be strong and stable enough to handle both the moon's low gravity and the rough, uneven lunar landscape. SpaceX will likely incorporate a similar design when developing legs for Mars landings, where surface conditions and gravity differ from both Earth and the Moon. The lunar version of Starship HLS also includes additional systems to manage landing without assistance. It has thrusters mounted on the body to control descent and help Starship position accurately before touching down. This complex design replaces the need for towers or runways and allows Starship to land independently on surfaces that lack support structures. Developing these systems is a challenging process, and SpaceX will need extensive testing to ensure reliability. The goal is for Starship to land payloads of up to 100 tons on the Moon and Mars with safe, stable support. Don't forget to check the link in the description to grab your own highly realistic Starship model. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you in the next video.